Okay, well, very excitingly here today at Frameline 37, San Francisco International LGBT Film Festival, we have local and national, well, global, actual icon, Michelle T, the writer of Valencia, which was made into a feature narrative length film and was presented on Friday evening at the Castro Theatre here in San Francisco to a sold out crowd. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can just start, Michelle, by telling us a little bit about that experience on Friday night. Oh, it was really spectacular. I mean, it's a, it's a really big project. There are uh, 20 different directors and they all have their crews and they have their, their actresses. And um, we got like, all of the filmmakers up here, all of the, um, their Michelles came up. And it was just a really great party. Filmmakers were meeting each other for the first time and hadn't met each other. And it just had the, um, it, there was so much like love and excitement and inspiration and this feeling of triumph. Like it was just really beautiful. And then to leave up here and go down into the sold out house and have there be so many people that, people who were in the book, you know, people who were around for that time period, um, people who were kids during that time period. I mean, just there's so many people and there's so much love for the project. It was really exciting. That must be so, yeah. It's uh -huh. so iconic in San Francisco. I actually moved here myself in the 90s. Oh, really? And moved on to Valencia Street, uh -huh. which looked a lot different yeah. then. So, Certainly. of course, when the novel came out. And I just, how do you think it will play outside of San Francisco to other audiences where it's such got a San Francisco feel about it? I mean, obviously universal messages, but yeah. Well, I think um, that the, that feel that is very San Francisco, it is very San Francisco, but I also feel like there is a larger sort of radical queer um, um, world that's out there and you know some of those films that even though even the ones that look very San Francisco in Valencia some of those chapters were filmed in Austin Texas they were filmed in Portland they were filmed in New York so there is this larger community of sort of radical scruffy queers that are there's pockets of us everywhere and I know this from touring with Sister Spit also that we bring our shows into all across the country and we find our people so Valencia will find its people oh I'm you sure you know for I'm sure. Yeah. sure yeah yeah excellent and can you talk a little bit about the process I mean it seems like such a brave move <laughs> to like do a collaborative mm -hmm. like narrative feature with 20 20 directors you said I thought there was 18 but there's 18 20. chapters oh there's 18 but, yeah. uh, two, Two chapters had uh, collaborative directors. Oh, I see. So, so there's 20. A total, I see. Yeah, 18 chapters, 20 directors. Right, mm -hmm. right. And did you give them a template or some kind of guideline about... The no, I mean, obviously they were assigned, or did they choose the chapter? Or they choose the, they chose the chapter if they mm. got in on the project early enough. Oh, and, I see. Um, yeah. But yeah, they always kind of did, I guess. Um, and they chose their chapter, and I really, they had um, technical things they had to adhere to oh, for turning in the finished product that I didn't know anything about, because that's um, Hillary's job as the more technical end yeah, of the producing. Yeah. But no, I just told them to go for it. I wanted them to, to, I wanted to see it through their eyes. I didn't want to have my own stamp on it. I feel like my stamp was already on it. I wrote right, it. Yeah, We're done, you, got, you know. Yeah. So I wanted to see, and it was my hope that, that they would do really weird things with casting, and they would put their own spin and put their own obsessions into it and, right. and they did yeah. so it's oh, they awesome. certainly did yeah. yeah yeah and do you have like uh, kind of someone you're following in this trade of putting this together in this way it seems like it's very new uh, in terms of narrative film uh, did, you, did you where did the inspiration come from to not just hire one crew mm -hmm. and a director yeah the inspiration came from necessity it's like <laughs> the film community that I'm a part of or the arts community that I'm a part of there's a ton of filmmakers in it and they're all amazing and they're just not at the place where they've figured out how to hustle a feature, you know? But they've all figured out how to hustle shorts. They've yeah. all made shorts, they've so made brilliant true. shorts. Yeah. And I thought, oh, you know, to ask a person to make a movie out of my book is such a huge, I mean, that's enormous, yeah. you know? But yeah. to ask, you know, 20 people to make a little bit of it, that's manageable, you know? And, um, and the more I thought about it, the more in love I fell with that. Um, with, with that, that, that instead of getting one film, we'd get like, you know, 18 films seemed much more exciting. And to see everybody's perspective, I just fell in love with that vision of it. Yeah, no, and it just worked so exceedingly well. I'm so and glad we so were worried. <laughs> <laughs> Such a relief. Well, it has so many voices, mm -hmm. too, through that. But the story, of course, you know, is overrides it, but yeah. then the voices that come through it. I mean, yeah. it really works, so congratulations. Thank you. And, um, and also, when it, um, it was part of the Frameline Completion Fund, yeah. too, and I just, perhaps you could speak a little bit to, perhaps 
what's your experience with Frameline um, over the years? I know that you've been in the city for perhaps a couple of decades now. Is that right? Yeah, or, yeah, 20, yeah, 20 years 20 this years, year, yeah. actually. Oh, yeah, wow, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So this is my 20th Frameline, probably, because oh, wow. I go yeah, every yeah, year yeah, to something, you know. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it's so fun. It's the best part of June. I think it's the best part of Pride is getting to see all the movies. Um, and um, the, the completion fund was incredible. I mean, we, we really... We needed it not just because of the expenses of producing a film that right. we needed it, but we needed to know that somebody saw it, what we were trying to do and believed in it right. and saw that it worked because, you know, we, me, it was just really me and Hillary being like, are we crazy? No, we're, we're not right. crazy. This is amazing. Wait, are we crazy? You know, and so um, even though we had so many filmmakers working on it, they just sent in their piece and they were done. So it was really me and Hillary hoping that it our vision was happening and it wasn't confusing and that you know the the transitions worked and so to find out that we got that award was huge you know it was just like oh my god it made us so happy to know that like it that it worked just that the film worked and that that we had the support of such an enormous film, film festival behind us you know it's huge yeah and how did you use the funding so on the final editing or the sound or how did you actually all of it uh, it just kind of went yeah. into the pile you oh, know excellent. what I mean yeah, of, of like all yeah. the work that's happening on yeah. it and the the posters and the final yeah the final production costs that we had um, we had, um, I mean, like, yeah, it's been a lot. <laughs> it's a pro it's a project of my nonprofit Radar, so um, so Radar has been sort of funding parts oh, yes, of it yeah, also. So yeah, it just was yeah. really great to kind of be able to be like, okay, we have some money for this now, and and, um, and go forward with yeah, get, taking it to Zap to do the final whatever they do there. I've never made a movie before. I don't even yeah. know what's happening. I usually got to talk to Hillary about it. Yeah, Hillary, trust the you know, professionals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. all of the, just all of the work that needed to be done to make it, to get it in perfect condition so we could show it here on right. the big screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked so beautiful too. It looked like, really yeah, beautiful. It did, and the colors and yeah. the sound sounded great. Yeah. Especially with that. Yeah, we had to do a sound pass on it. That yeah, was something yeah, that had to happen. Um, yeah, yeah, fantastic. And has this put you into like a movie, like to film producer kind of world now? Do you feel Feel like God. Yes, you like you feel like this is a new I mean I know you have always had so many parts and so exceedingly talented on so many fronts but yeah does this put you into a new um, kind of area now of film producing perhaps or? I mean I I already feel sad that this is gonna go away this moment's uh, gonna go away uh, you know so I would love to do something like this again um, I'm kind of contracted right now to do three books so I have three books coming up that I have to write and when I'm done with those I do have some film ideas that I want to jump on it, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For and sure. is there any other of your um, novels that you would are you interested that have already been written and out there in the world that you think could also lend themselves to film? I kind of think all of them, yeah. you know, with, yeah. the, with the right tweaking that always yeah. needs to happen yeah. with, the, with the written work. I think they would yeah. all kind of work really exactly. well. And um, and there are some, some people who are friends who are part of this project that are interested in different yeah. working, continuing to work together. So that I hope that happens. Oh, excellent. Yeah. excellent. And what type of um, like queer filmmakers or perhaps something you've seen at Frameline this year or in previous years, perhaps that inspired you in this process? To oh. Yeah. Um, oh my God! Well, just yesterday I saw in, a sh in the um, shorts program I saw uh, Tara Jepsen and Beth Lissick's new film oh, right. TikTok yeah, for Ding yes, Dong. Yeah, it's yeah. so amazing, and there's so much like joy and silliness, and it's again it's a community project. It's like I, you know, the people who are making it are just all part of this like you know queer film community. The people that are in it, and it's, it was really really hilarious and bizarre in the best way and inspiring and inspiring just to see that like I know that they just like wanted to do this so they've been doing these characters and then Jed Bell was like I want to make a movie with you guys and just like it's so inspiring to see things just be able to happen that, like you know and, and I always see that at Frameline that you just see communities come together they've, they've come, been coming together all throughout the year putting their stuff together and then you get to see it here and it's super inspiring so I love that I loved interior leather bar oh, yes. that blew yeah. my mind Excellent. I was like that great point in it where I was like wait I don't know what's happening yes. I thought I knew it was yeah. happening I totally know what's ha don't yeah. know what's happening now and um and now I love James Franco yeah. so much. Like I like he's my hero. Yeah. That's so weird, you know. That was a that was a yeah. really and I also really love Travis Matthews, um, the film the film that preceded it uh, in their rooms, oh, London. Yeah, 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 so beautiful. Yeah, yeah, he's really yeah, talented. Yeah, um, very talented. Yeah. And local as well, of yeah. course. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. Yeah, great, excellent. Yeah. Well, um, thank you so much. Any final words to say to uh, like for Frameline Thirty Seven or your experience? I guess if you just want to sum it up in a sentence, maybe. Oh. 
I love queer films and queer commun art community, and this is all what makes it happen. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Thanks.